from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the members of the St. Francis Xavier Seniors Club of Toronto East. This Mass is being offered for the good health of their members, <clears throat> especially those confined to their home in health care facilities and nursing home in memory of the deceased members and, all the, and that all nations of the world live in peace, love, and unity. In a way, I'm praying for my own mom and dad because they belong to this St. Francis Xavier Seniors Club of Toronto East. The St. Francis Xavier Seniors Club Toronto East have been faithful supporters of this daily mass on television since we first began broadcasting. You have our thanks and the thanks of all who are gathered here and across the globe. And now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist on the feast of St. Eugène Mazenot, we ask this great saint to intercede for us before the throne of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. You came to plead for us before the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, who in your mercy bestowed on your bishop, Saint Eugène de Mazenot, of apostolic zeal to preach the gospel to the nations, grant that through his intercession we may set aflame with the same spirit our sight firmly fixed on the service of the church and the salvation of the world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The tribune who had arrested Paul sent him to Caesarea, to be tried by Felix the governor. After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, there is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and to be tried there on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has set his throne
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus showed himself to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. <coughs> Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because Jesus said to him a third time, Do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Eugène de Mazanon. He is the founder of the Congregation of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate as we call them here, OMIs, or just plain oblates. One of the most well-known oblate among Canadian oblate is, of course, Father Ron Rollheiser, who did one of our missions, Lenten missions, some years ago. Now, when we look at the saints that we have got in Canada, so many of them were born in France, and they came over to Canada. We have as a good example our own Canadian martyrs from, that we celebrate at Midland. Jeanne de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogue, Saint John de la Lande, Saint René Goupil, to name just four out of the eight. But there were also women, giants in their own stead. Saint Marguerite Bourgeois, Saint Marguerite uh, Duville, Saint Marie of the Incarnation. 
All these came and they dedicated their lives to proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Now, St. Eugene de Mazano did not come to Canada, but his oblates did come. And they have done some fantastic work here, especially in the northern areas of Canada, where people didn't want, where priests and missionaries didn't want to go. Eugene de Mazano was born just eight years or seven years before the beginning of the French Revolution. He belonged to an aristocratic family. The French Revolution that took place in 1789 and ended 10 years later in 1799. And Louis XVI was killed, and there were great men like Robespierre and Jean-Marc, Jean-Marie uh, Sade. And these were the people that shaped the situation, and it must have also shaped the mind of Eugène de Mazenot because he belonged to an aristocratic family. His own family was constantly in danger, and it was at the ripe age of 18 that this revolution got over. In our gospel today, Jesus tells Peter, Peter, do you love me? And when Peter answers, yes, I love you, Jesus says, feed my lambs. Feed the new people who believe that I have died and risen from the dead. And Jesus would have said the same thing to Eugène de Mazenot. During the time when <clears throat> the church was being persecuted and the aristocratic were, ar aristocrats were being sent to the guillotine, feed my lambs, take care of these people. And so Eugène de Mazenot started a group of people mainly to proclaim the gospel in a country that was considered to be the first daughter of the church in which they were gradually being secularized. And that was his main, main reason for starting that order of oblates. And when they came to Canada, they continued the same work. And we see their fruits in the University of Ottawa in St. Paul's University that they founded and is still flourishing in our day and our time. But gradually, Yoshen also had a great love for the poor that were there during his time, which he himself had experienced. He had seen from an aristocratic point of view how the poor were badly treated, how the, poor's, the rights of the poor were ignored. And so he fashioned this group of men who were going to proclaim the good news with three very strong and very firm principles. And the first principle that Eugène started was not, solitary, not solitary sanctity, but sanctity in a community. Eugène would say, if you have a dream, it will always remain a dream if you are alone. But if you have a dream within a community, it can become a reality. Perhaps that's the reason why Jesus sent the 72 disciples out in pairs. There was common sense psychology. If one of them got lazy, the other one could challenge him. If one of them got discouraged, the other one could console and comfort them. And so Eugene also realized that if something good was going to be done, it would be through a group of people, not Lone Ranger attitudes and Lone Ranger apostolates. Do it within the community. <clears throat> the second great uh, desire or second great motive that he had was prayer with justice. And justice could be seen right, left, and center because he saw the injustice that was being done to the poor, to the marginalized, to those who did not have a voice when the church and the aristocrats were controlling everything. And, and St. Eugene said, you have to pray, but you also have to seek justice. If you only have prayer and nothing else, it becomes thoughtless action. I mean, it becomes uninvolved thought. But if you only have action because you want to take care of the poor without thinking about it, it becomes thoughtless action. 
And the third and final <clears throat> uh, great motive that he had was a preference, a preferential option for the poor. This came to him so naturally. He saw how well he was treated, and he saw how badly others were treated. And because his heart was inflamed, just like Peter's was inflamed, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, he decided he had to have this option for the poor. Saint Eugène de Mazenot, pray for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray in thanksgiving to God for the congregation of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate and for all the wonderful work they have done in Canada and across the United States. In thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sponsors of our Mass, for the members of the St. Francis Xavier Seniors Community in Toronto East, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Eugène de Mazano's great preference for the poor, this preferential option for the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, listen to the prayers that we make through the, your Son, Jesus Christ, and through the intercession of your great saint, Saint Eugène de Mazano, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer on the memorial of Saint Eugène, and stir up within our hearts the fire of your love, so that together with this Eucharistic offering, we may make, your gift, make you the gift of our whole life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended into the highest heaven as angels wonder mediator between God and all of us, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. Jesus ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, may be confident of following him where he has gone. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing forever the hymn of your glory. <clears throat> holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, <clears throat> with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Eugène de Mazonot, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, God of all goodness, for having called us to the table of this Eucharistic sacrifice, and we pray that you may lead us to share with Saint Eugène the joy promised to the faithful servants of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.